Hi everyone, welcome to the first edition for 2024 of Midweek Market Update. I'm Ashley Rosser with Victory Wealth Partners and today what I really wanted to talk about was taking a look back at 2023 and kind of looking at all the ups and downs that investors had to kind of navigate um, through the year, kind of what happened, where we ended, and then just some points about what we could possibly see for 2024. And so, it's interesting because even though when we look at, you now this is the S&P 500 and we can see that the S&P 500 did in fact have a strong year, there was actually a lot of headwinds that investors had to navigate as we kind of got through last year. And so the first thing that uh, happened last year was as we came into March, you may remember that all of a sudden it hit the news that there were two regional banks that unexpectedly were um, closing the doors and they essentially collapsed. And so this really sent ripples across the entire market. And so we kind of saw this meltdown here. And so we market sold off about 9% total in a very short period of time. And obviously people were very concerned at this point wondering if this is kind of the beginning of a bigger problem and so the good news was that very quickly it was established that these appeared to be isolated events that in general we saw that our banking industry was remaining stable and strong and so then we were able to kind of sharply see a recover uh, recovery from march kind of coming up into april and and so as we came up from that bottom there all the way up really to June, markets really continue to just have a steady climb. And so that was a result of a few things. Number one, the, the soft landing narrative really began to take hold in investors. And it was this idea that the Federal Reserve may actually be able to achieve this soft landing recession where not a whole lot of damage is going to have to happen in order to have um, interest rates finally come down and our inflation numbers come down and so we kind of saw this kind of take place where investors were pricing in this kind of perfect opportunity here that we're going to get this soft landing and so at this point s p 500 was up about 70 percent by the end of june tech was very overbought and so you may remember, if you look back at those videos from June, we were talking about how narrow the leadership was. So as the S&P was having this great run, it was really um, connected to seven underlying stocks. And if you looked at the broad index and the rest of the holdings, most of those holdings were not able to actually beat the index, meaning that it was these seven big tech names that were propping up the index and kind of causing all of this positive performance. And so that becomes concerning because the fact that if you did not have any of those seven companies in your portfolio, up until that time, your uh, performance was likely either neutral or even it could have been negative at that point. So looking at the S&P 500 wasn't necessarily a good gauge of what was kind of going on across the board because again, these seven super concentrated companies were really responsible for almost all of that performance. And so um, you may also recall the fact that we were kind of concerned about some of the economic backdrop that we were beginning um, to see. And so after seeing this over concentration with the big seven, um, we kind of gave a warning that like, hey, you know, this probably is not going to be sustainable. We've kind of been seeing this huge run. And so markets finally did begin to take a breather as we got into August. And so we actually wound up seeing a three month decline after that. So we saw three months in a row of negative declines. And so I know that a lot of investors were kind of getting a little concerned at that point. And again, these were really just necessary market moves. When markets get overheated too quickly and they get too hot, uh, the only way for us to kind of be, have the opportunity to kind of reach new highs is to allow we got to burn off some of that excess somehow and sometimes that just happens you know by trading sideways for a while and sometimes it happens with a correction um, and so by the time that we entered the very beginning of november we were in a double correction meaning that both the nasdaq and the s p 500 were down by at least 10 percent and so it was at this point that people were really starting to get concerned but the good news is that after we came into november and we kind of hit this little low in um, relative strength, 
we saw an incredible amount of running those last few months of the year. And so uh, we saw in November that the S&P 500 uh, kind of came roaring back. So that was up 8.9% for the month. And that is actually the largest monthly increase that we've seen in that index in 10 years. And so what we were talking about as we came into November and early December was, is there any more room for markets to run? You know, is a Santa Claus rally going to be a thing? And so if you remember reading my blog for uh, January that I just wrote, you'll, you'll know that I mentioned that investors did not get coal at the end of December because for the month, the S&P 500 was actually up again nearly 4% for the month. And so at the end of December, the S&P 500 finished just over 26% for the year. Uh, but... When we talk about the Santa Claus rally, we actually find out that Santa didn't really completely come because, and I'll show in another slide, the fact that our first five trading days of the year were actually negative. So it's kind of, we had a, we got two different um, scenarios where we had a strong end of December, but then January um, has been weaker. And so we continue to see that over-concentration in the indexes uh, even now. And so, what people want to know, okay, so that's where we've been. So we had a bunch of ups and downs, but where, where, where are we going? And so I think that that's really going to depend on a couple of uh, things. The number one most important is going to be the Federal Reserve and what they decide to do with interest rates. And so this chart's kind of boring, but I wanted to show you. So this kind of shows the Federal Reserve interest rate hikes over last year from February on. And so after the series of rate hikes that we had, we were, um, we were up to 5.5%. And so what the market is expecting now and hoping for that in 2024, we're going to see a rate decrease begin to come. And they're pricing in about a 75 basis point or 0.75% um, break uh, lower. And so that is one of the things that I think markets are really kind of looking for at this point. We've gone through these series of rate hikes. And so when are we going to see this relief come? Because if the relief comes, then I think that will certainly bolster the market's ability to kind of continue running. However, as we look at uh, inflation and CPI numbers, you can see, so this was um, 2020, and then this is that crazy kind of inflationary run that we had. Remember, we dumped all that stimulus, all that pent up um, buying and selling that wasn't able to happen when you know China was in the shutdown. Then all of a sudden there was this pent up demand, and so people were just buying, and then we had stimulus money. And so things really kind of started to get out of hand, which is why the Federal Reserve had to come in and say, hey, we really got to try to get a handle on inflation. They let it run hot for a little bit, and then they realize this isn't going to go away on its own, and so that we have to start increasing rates, make it more expensive to borrow money, start to help inflation to come down. So last month was the first bump we've seen in inflation here. So inflation numbers for December 2023 came in slightly higher than what was expected and higher than the month before. And so I think that this may make, this is going to really put the Federal Reserve in an interesting position in terms of what they do with, with rates upcoming. So I expect that they're not going to be making a rate hike anytime, a rate decrease anytime soon. I, I, I'm assuming that they'll probably wait and see what happens next month. And maybe later on in 2024, we could still see uh, that decrease begin. But I think that this is going to be, this has the potential to be problematic if they cut rates too soon. And so just taking a look at where we are right now with our dolly chart, just looking where's our areas of strength. Domestic equities is certainly in the number one category. Large cap growth, number one. Small cap growth is um, in the weaker areas. Technology, industrials, consumer cyclicals, and financials would be some of the sectors that are continuing to show strong uh, relative strength. International equities is right below domestic equities. Something that's interesting, so fixed income is still here at the bottom, but remember that fixed income does have an inverse relationship with interest rates. So when interest rates begin to come down, 
bond values are going to go up. So I don't know that we should be counting fixed income out at this point. Um, and so, you know, for the rest of the year, I think we're really just going to have to wait and see what happens. It's all obviously it's a presidential uh, election year, which has the potential to at least have short term volatility um, in there. But I would say that, you know, in terms of after what we saw last year, are we going to be able to have additional room for the markets to run this year? And I think that there is a storyline that says that that could certainly happen. When we look at the age of our current bull market, so we're coming into our second year of the bull market um, that was just established in late 2022 after we had that abysmal year of 2022. Um, and so when we look at, at just where we are kind of in our in the timing of that and the age of it, that typically the S&P 500 um, has gained an average of 12.6% in that second year of the bull market and it's been positive every year. So even though we've seen some short-term volatility happening in the last, you know, very early on in this trading year in January, I think that that may just be a result of the pent-up um, overvaluation and how hot markets got at the end of the year last year. Um, and so again, is it foolproof that we say in the second year that it'll definitely be positive? No, but we do say that even though history doesn't repeat itself, it often rhymes. So we can often take a look at those patterns and, and kind of draw those conclusions. And so obviously we're just gonna have to wait and see. From our end, we are certainly watching relative strength. We're certainly watching which areas continue to kind of heat up and cool down and apply that um, as we are making those investment decisions. And so um, I thank you so much for your time. Obviously, if you have questions, we are always happy to go over your current portfolio or if you kind of want to know a little more about how we make um, decisions at Victory, we would love to have those conversations with you. Otherwise, thank you for joining us and I'll be back in February. Take care.